good afternoon, everyone. My warm greetings to our respected chairman, sir, AI committee, and AI committee mm -hmm. members, and respected jury, and all the members who are connected with us at this point of time via Zoom and YouTube. Uh, so, a few days ago, I was wondering what is uh, more uncertain in the stock market. And then I realized that manually drafted projected financial statements are more uncertain. So today, with the help of AI, we are going to convert this uncertain guesswork into you know, uh, the intelligent financial forecast. And AI will help us in providing the financial forecast with more accuracy. It will help us in, in stress testing our assumptions and also benchmarking our competitors. So let's get started. The AI tool which I'd be using for this case study is Claude AI. And the financial statements which I'd be referring is the uh, financial statements of the Metro Limited, uh, which I have downloaded from Screener. Let me uh, quickly walk you through it. So these are the financial statements I'd be using. It includes the data of profit and loss. Um, and it includes the data of last couple of uh, past years. Uh, like, and then we have the balance sheet data. So we'll be referring these two data for a use case. And you may have observed that the format in which this data is given is very much similar to the CME data we prepare for a client. Right. So uh, for reference, we are using this data, but for projections, for drafting the projections, you may use your client data provided you remove the confidential information from uh, that data and uh, for the confidentiality purpose, and you can uh, make the uh, projections um, based mm -hmm. on the basis of that CME data. So before straight away jumping to the projections, let us quickly uh, go through mm -hmm. one or two other prompts Rishi uh, uh, sir, are you saying something? So let us quickly go through one or two other prompts for better understanding. Uh, so here we go to the clock. Here I'm uploading the Zomato financial statements. It includes only balance sheet and PNL data. And uh, there are prompts already written. So I'm instructing it uh, to please go through it thoroughly and please analyze the key trends in revenue growth, profit margins, and operation efficiency over the past five years. Uh, let us see how it is going to analyze. So it is analyzed, it is analyzing the data and it is providing the result. Um, it has analyzed revenue, it has analyzed profit margin. Uh, in net profit and operational efficiency. So the data, the output uh, which is provided by Claude can be used in you know, preparing project reports for my clients and it can be used for any uh, information I want to display on my client's website. So these data can be used uh, and they can come, definitely come in handy uh, if I'm providing consultancy service to my client. Uh, not only this, I can instruct Claude to convert this analysis into picture form. So I can instruct it, if it, it can show it pictorically. So now it is creating the visualization. Because what happens when we have the picture form, uh, picture based data, so it, it definitely uh, quickens the decision making and uh, uh, it uh, helps me understand the data better. So now we have uh, this interactive artifact. So it'll take a couple of seconds. So if you see that whatever analysis it has provided to me due to my previous prompt, it has beautifully converted it into the form of charts. And uh, I can you know, go through it and understand it, how, uh, how my revenue is doing, whether it is growing or it's becoming stable any, at any point of time. And it has provided me profitability trends. 
both operating profit, lift profit, operating profit margin, and then cost structure as per in terms of revenue and other PO side. Right. So this is how my historical data can be converted into picture form. Now, having analyzed the historical data, having converted into picture form, now I can go to the projection. But before before going to the projection, I need to understand what will be the basis of my projection, right? Uh, because uh, I need to understand the algorithm it is working upon and what, what basis it is going to use to form the projection. So I can inspect it. to so provide me the reasonable assumptions for revenue growth, cross margin, operating expenses, and capital expenditure for a three-year projection. So you see, it says that your historical revenue growth rate have been 20, uh, in March 20, 98%, in March 2021, 23%. So we, it recommends that for next one year, it sh should be 50 to 55 percent, year 2, 35 to 40 percent, year 3, 25 to 30 percent. So this is going to be his assumption. And then for gross margin, uh, it, is, uh, it is going to keep it 80 to 88 to 90 percent, for year 2, 89 to 91 percent, 90 to 92 percent, and so on. For other expenses also, uh, and you see like uh, for operating expenses, it says that uh, employee cost reduced from 46 to 14 percent of the revenue. So we are able to assess that uh, it is calculating operating expense as a percentage of revenue. So now we understand how it is going to develop, it is going to draft the projection uh, because we have understood its assumptions. And if we want to provide a very specific insight, like we have some specific information for a specific year, uh, like if the company is coming up with any branches, uh, any new branches in any particular year. Um, so we can instruct it that and it can revise this assumption. So, so uh, I've provided this instruction that the company is going to expand in five more countries which are having a population of 10 crores each. Can you revise the assumption based on this new information? So that my financial forecast becomes more accurate and more realistic. So it has quickly revised those assumptions. Now revenue is 65 to 70% is expected in year one, 55 to 60% in year two, and so on. So now I've understood what basis it is going to follow if I instruct it to, make, uh, to draft the predictions for me. Uh, so I can now safely ask it to draft the projected financial statements. Last two minutes. Okay, sir. So since we are short on time, I can show you the financial statements uh, I, it has provided to me. So it was an HTML format. So it has provided me with this result. So I can share this HTML file with my client also. And uh, means I need not to be worried that my uh, the formula which I'm using into my Excel, it would be disturbed by any activity of my client. No, they just simply share the link and it would be visible to him. Uh, the projected income statement, projected balance sheet, and key financial ratios. Then uh, we, can, we can also, uh, like the, this we have done to cater to the request of a client, uh, con consultancy services, but if we are investing into any company from the point of view of investor, then we can also ask Claude to provide us valuations of the company. So, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, I can walk you through this. So what is going to be company's valuation based on this project? So it has provided uh, me uh, the valuation. Uh, on different parameters, like on the basis of price earning ratio and EV, EBITDA, DCF analysis. So it has provided me the reasonable uh, valuation. Then I can also uh, ask uh, this Claude to provide me where uh, I mean, where uh, my company or my client's company is standing in the terms of competitors and uh, whether it is underperforming or overperforming. So yeah, you can see the results. 
are asked is to provide me comparative financial performance analysis. So it says that uh, in terms of revenue, you are superior as compared to your competitors. In terms of your profitability, you are underperforming. Uh, if, when it comes to operating uh, profit, in terms of net profit, you are again underperforming. And then written on equity, you are significantly underperforming. So this was all from my side. I would just say that AI is not just calculator, but it is a strategic advisor to you, to your clients. And it is it enables AI enhanced CFO decision making. Thank you, Gati. Uh, 